what the Bible says. The following scriptures cover what the Bible says about I. First, I will read all the references so that you know where to look in the Bible. Next, I will read the scriptures straight through so that you may receive the full message concerning I. The following scriptures are from Genesis 3-5, Genesis 6-8, Exodus 21-24, Deuteronomy 12-8, Deuteronomy 13-18, Deuteronomy 32-10, Judges 17-6, Judges 21 25, 2 Samuel 15 25, 1 Kings 15 5, 1 Kings 15 11, 2 Chronicles 16 9, Job 10 4, Job 16 16, Job 24 15, Job 32 1, Job 41 18 Psalm 11 4 Psalm 15 4 Psalm 17 8 Psalm 25 15 Psalm 33 18 Psalm 34 15 Psalm 101 6 Psalm 119 148 Psalm 123 2 Psalm 1324 Psalm 13916 Psalm 1418 Psalm 14515 Proverbs 425 Proverbs 521 Proverbs 64 Proverbs 153 Proverbs 2012 Proverbs 22:12 Proverbs 23:5 Proverbs 28:22 Proverbs 30:13 Ecclesiastes 1:8 Ecclesiastes 2:14 Ecclesiastes 4:8 Ecclesiastes 11:7 Isaiah 1:15 Isaiah 3:16 Isaiah 29:18 Isaiah 3020, Isaiah 32:3, Isaiah 35:5, Isaiah 42:7, Isaiah 43:8, Isaiah 49:5, Isaiah 64:4, Isaiah 65:12, Jeremiah 5:3, Jeremiah 5:21, Jeremiah 9:1. Jeremiah 9:18, Jeremiah 13:17, Jeremiah 14:17, Jeremiah 24:6, Ezekiel 24:16, Ezekiel 24:25, Amos 9:4, Habakkuk 1:13, Zechariah 3:9, Zechariah 4:10. Matthew 5.29, Matthew 5.38, Matthew 6.22, Matthew 13.16, Matthew 18.9, Matthew 20.15, Matthew 20.33, Mark 7.22, Mark 8.18, Luke 2.30, Luke 4.20, Luke 1023, Luke 1134, John 96, Romans 118, 1 Corinthians 2 9, 2 Corinthians 10 7, Revelation 1 7, Revelation 114, Revelation 2 18, Revelation 3 18, Revelation 4 6, Revelation 11 12, Revelation 19.12 For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, 
and you will be like God, knowing the difference between good and evil and blessing and calamity. But Noah found grace, favor in the eyes of the Lord, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. You shall not do according to all we do here in the camp this day, every man doing whatever looks right in his own eyes. If you obey the voice of the Lord, your God, to keep all his commandments, which I command you this day, to do what is right in the eyes of the Lord, your God. He found him in a desert land, in the howling void of the wilderness. He kept circling around him. He scanned him penetratingly. He kept him as the pupil of his eye. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. Then the king told Zakok, take back the ark of God to the city. If I find favor in the Lord's eyes, he will bring me back and let me see both it and his house. Because David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. And Asa did right in the eyes of the Lord, as did David his father forefather for the eyes of the lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of those whose hearts are blameless toward him you have done foolishly in this therefore from now on you shall have wars have you eyes of flesh do you see as man sees my face is red and swollen with weeping, and on my eyelids is the shadow of death. My eyes are dimmed. The eye also of the adulterer waits for the twilight, saying, No, I shall see me. And he puts a disguise upon his face. So these three men ceased to answer Job, because he was rigidly righteous, upright, and in right standing with God in his own eyes. But there was a fifth man there also. His sneezings flash forth light, and his eyes are like the reddish eyelids of the dawn. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids test and prove the children of men. In whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he who honors those who fear the Lord, who revere and worship him, who swears to his own heart, to his own hurt, and does not change. Keep and guard me as the pupil of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Behold, the Lord's eye is upon those who fear him, who revere and worship him with awe, who wait for him and hope in his mercy and loving kindness. The eyes of the Lord are toward the uncompromisingly righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. My eyes shall look with favor upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He who walks blamelessly, he shall minister to me. My eyes anticipate the night watches, and I am awake before the cry of the watchman, that I may meditate on your word. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, and as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy and loving kindness for us. I will not permit my eyes to sleep or my eyelids to slumber. Your eyes saw my unformed substance, and in your book all the days of my life were written before ever they took shape, when as yet there was none of them. But my eyes are toward you, O God the Lord, and you do I trust and take refuge. Pour out my life 
nor leave it destitute and bare. The eyes of all wait for you, looking, watching, and expecting, and you give them their food in due season. Let your eyes look right on with fixed purpose, and let your gaze be straight before you. For the ways of man are directly before the eyes of the Lord, and he who would have us live soberly, chastely, and godly, carefully weighs all man's goings. Give not unnecessary sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch upon the evil and the good. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord has made both of them. The eyes of the Lord keep guard over knowledge and him who has it, but he overthrows the words of the treacherous. Will you set your eyes upon wealth when suddenly it is gone? He who has an evil eye, covetous eye, hastens to be rich and knows not that want will come upon him. There is a class of people, oh how lofty are their eyes and their raised eyelids. All things are weary with toil, and all words are feeble. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walks in darkness. And yet, I perceive that in the end, one event happens to them both. Here is one alone, no one with him. He neither has child nor brother, Yet there is no end to all his labor, neither is his eye satisfied with riches, neither does he ask, for whom do I labor and deprive myself of good? This also vanity, emptiness, falsity, and futility. Yes, it is a painful effort and an unhappy business. Truly the light is sweet, and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. And when you spread forth your hands in prayer, imploring help, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Moreover, the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with outstretched necks and with undisciplined, flirtatious and alluring eyes, tripping along with mincing an affected gait and making a tink tinkling noise with the anklets on their feet and in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book and out of obscurity and gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see and though the lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction Yet your teacher will not hide himself any more, but your eyes will constantly behold your teacher. Then the eyes of those who see will not be closed or dimmed, and the ears of those who hear will listen. Then the eyes of the blind shall be open, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. To open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon, and those who sit in darkness from the prison, Bring forth the blind people who have eyes and the deaf who have ears. And now, says the Lord, who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him and not be swept away. For I am honorable in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. For... From of old, no one has heard nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen a God besides you, who works and shows himself active on behalf of him who earnestly waits for him. I will destine you, says the Lord, for the sword, and you shall bow down to the slayer, because when I called, you did not answer. When I spoke, you did not listen nor obey, but you did what was evil in my eyes, and you chose that in which I did not delight. O Lord, do not your eyes look on the truth? They have meant to please you outwardly, but you look on their hearts. You have stricken them, but they have not grieved. You have consumed them, but they have refused to take correction or instruction. 
They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to repent and return to you. Hear now this, O foolish people, without understanding or heart, who have eyes and see not, who have ears and hear not. O oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a reservoir of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Let them make haste and raise a wailing over us and for us, that our eyes may run down with tears and our eyelids gush with water. But if you will not hear and obey, I will weep in secret for your pride. My eyes will weep bitterly and run down with tears, because the Lord's flock has been taken captive. Therefore, Jeremiah, you shall say to them, let my eyes run down with tears night and day, and let them not cease. For the virgin daughter of my people has been smitten with a great wound, with a very grievous, a very grievous blow. For I will set my ears upon them for God. I will set my ears upon them for good, and I will bring them up and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. Son of man, Ezekiel, behold, I take away from you the desire of your eyes, your wife, at a single stroke, yet you shall neither mourn nor weep, neither shall your tears flow, and you, son of man, on the day when I take from them my temple, their strength and their stronghold, their joy and their glory, the delight of their eyes and their heart's chief desire, and also take their sons and daughters. And though they go into captivity before their enemies, there will I command the sword, and it shall slay them, and I will set my eyes upon them for evil and not for good. You are of purer eyes than to behold evil, and cannot look inactively upon injustice. Why then do you look upon the plunderer? Why are you silent when the wicked one destroys him who is more righteous than the Chaldean oppressor is? For behold, upon the stone which I have set before Joshua, upon that one stone are seven eyes or facets. The all-embracing providence of God and the sevenfold radiations of the Spirit of God. Behold, I will carve upon it its inscription says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity and guilt of this land in a single day. Who with reason despises the day of small things? For these seven shall rejoice when they see the plummet in the band in the hands of Zerubbabel. These seven are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro throughout the whole earth. If your right eye serves as a trap to ensnare you or is an occasion for you to stumble and sin, pluck it out and throw it away. It is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be cast into hell. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is sound, your entire body will be full of light. But blessed, happy, Fortunate and to be envied are your eyes because they do see and your ears because they do hear. And if your eye causes you to stumble and sin, pluck it out and throw it away from you. It is better, more profitable and wholesome for you to enter life with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the hell, Gaina of fire. Am I not permitted to do what I choose with what is mine? Or do you begrudge my being generous? Is your eye evil because I am good? They answered him, Lord, we want our eyes to be open, coveting, a greedy desire to have more wealth, dangerous and destructive wickedness, deceit, unrestrained, indecent conduct, an evil eye. Envy, slander, evil speaking, malicious misrepresentation, abusiveness, pride, the sin of an uplifted heart against God and man, foolishness, folly, lack of sense, recklessness, thoughtlessness, 
Having eyes, do you not see with them? And having ears, do you not hear and perceive and understand the sense of what is said? And do you not remember? For with my own eyes, I have seen your salvation. Then he rolled up the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were gazing attentively at him. Then turning to his disciples, he said privately, Blessed, happy to be envied are those whose eyes are what you see. Whose eyes see what you see. Your eyes is the lamp of your body. When your eye, your conscience, is sound and fulfilling its office, your whole body is full of light. But when it is not sound and is not fulfilling its office, your body is full of darkness. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay, mud, with his saliva, and he spread it as ointment on the man's eyes as it is written god gave them a spirit an attitude of stupor eyes that should not see and ears that should not hear that has continued down to this very day but on the contrary as the scripture says what eye has not seen and ear has not heard and has not entered into the heart of man all that god has prepared made and keeps ready for those who love him who hold him in affectionate reverence promptly obeying him and gratefully recognizing the benefits he has bestowed look at this obvious fact which is before your eyes if any one is confident that he is christ let him reflect and remind himself that even as he is christ so too are we behold he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth shall gaze upon him, and beat their breasts, and mourn and lament over him. Even so must it be. Amen. So be it. His head and his hair were white like white wool, as white as snow. And his eyes flashed like a flame of fire. And to the angel, messenger of the assembly, church, in Viatira, write, These are the words of the Son of God, who has eyes that flash like a flame of fire, and whose feet glow like bright and burnished and white hot bronze. Therefore, I counsel you to purchase from me gold refined and tested by fire, that you may be truly wealthy, and white clothes to clothe you, and to keep the shame of your nudity from being seen, and salve to put on your eyes, that you may see. And in front of the throne, there was also what looked like a transparent glassy sea, as if of crystal. And around the throne, in the center, at each side of the throne, were four living creatures, who were full of eyes in front and behind, with intelligence as to what is before and at the rear of them. Then the two witnesses heard a strong voice from heaven, calling to them, Come up here. And before the very eyes of their enemies, they ascended into heaven in a cloud. His eyes blazed like a flame of fire, and on his head are many kingly crowns, diadems, and he has a title name inscribed, which he alone knows or can understand.